Okay. Sure. That's so nice that it's working for us. <laughs> Very nice. I think she's live. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good happy morning. Friday. I know. Incredible. Happy Friday. And yeah. it's so beautiful outside. It's going to be and a beautiful day. So that just adds to my list of things I want to accomplish today. <laughs> Conquer the world. No. My neighbor has some dandelions in the ditch. They haven't bloomed yet because it's been too, too too cold. And I want to add them to the front of my garden. So I will land. go today and and grab them. I do have permission. There's no you said dandelions? Dandelions. Nice. Nice. Now I know my husband too. He says, <clears throat> I don't care. We have we live in a very quiet senior neighborhood and a lot of our neighbors are very much of that uh, era where it was like kill the dandelions get rid of them but my husband lets them flourish all over and he well i mean it's pretty it's the nice yellow and we all know that we want to you know keep the bees around and all these different things to have them around and and all our neighbors are like oh my god and the weed man is coming and <laughs> just, it would be <laughs> great to just let them flourish my neighbor lets them flourish my husband goes crazy he's a little crazy about that um so that you can make tea with them and you can make and you can pick the greens and have that in your salad rather than going and spending it to yeah going to the store and buying dandelion leaves seems really crazy and isn't dandelion um i'm not a hundred percent on this but isn't dandelion one of those nice ones for hormonal balancing too uh liver it's liver. a liver right, it's too. a liver it encourages the liver and mm -hmm. uh of course you need a healthy liver for proper hormone uh metabolism amongst yeah. many other things but yeah most definitely um but definitely if uh you know before you go out and pick your dandelions out of your front yard uh do some research talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about and I, I don't imagine there would be too much issues with it, but you definitely don't want to just, and making sure that they're organic too. So if- Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine I, I plant dandelions in my um, my raised gardens? That would be funny. They'll take over. <laughs> They'll take over though. You oh don't my have gosh. much left in that, den in that garden. So you have to have something just as strong in there maybe to keep it at bay. Cause they just, they just take off. They do. So, yeah. I was up early this morning and I got myself, um, my version of a bullet coffee. Do you ever eat, drink bullet coffee? I love bulletproof coffees. Okay. Yes. What do you put in your bulletproof coffee? Um, well, it depends. So I do put some coconut oil when I don't have MCT. So like a tablespoon and a tablespoon of butter, um, and and flurry that right with a little bit of uh, hot coffee and then i pour it in on top i may add a little bit of cinnamon depends uh, yeah no i just i was researching that a little bit further this morning i know i know what i like in my um bulletproof it's not really a bulletproof but i, I know what i like in mine but there's so many different variations of it mm -hmm. and i thought i'd just ask because um i was setting up um, a newsletter this morning about intermittent fasting and then having a little bit of yeah. recipe for bulletproof coffee i know in mine i like well i always put my collagen in my coffee first of yeah all. i'm all out i do need to i was looking at that at costco and i was like no no yeah I'll buy a new, no no i'll buy a neutral bullet so i have a yeah. better blender instead yeah. next time i go i'll buy it again so. oh nice yeah and um i mean there's always a bit of a controversy between just plain coconut oil and mct oil there's apparently there's more nutrients in, in plain coconut oil than there is I, I guess it's been taken out of mct oil well i would think the less processed the yeah. better although i would think um David Asbury's uh, MCT oil has probably been modified to be more absorbable and has more um, aspects to it so that you get the best bang for the buck in the MCT. So I would think coconut oil would be better, but again, it depends on how you want it absorbable and how you want that meltable and things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind the, um, I mean, Technically, when I break it down to it, coconut oil is MCT oil, but it's just the liquefied version of it. So the liquefied, yeah. They changed it somehow, which is that processing 
citrus. Processing. Oh. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. I put a little bit of vanilla in because I always like a flavored coffee. Some people yep. like um, butter, grass fed butter is usually a better option, but then there's also ghee as well. Have you ever made ghee? I've not made ghee. I've actually looked at it at the store as well. Um, what were the prices I've not. of ghee? It's not that bad. You oh, know, no? It, no, no, not at all. Um, it's, I would think for the quantity of ghee that you get out of a pound of butter, which is what, $5 right now, maybe you can find it for $4 on sale. Yeah, um, and yes. then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, or if you're finding the grass fed butter, you're up to seven well, to $10, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you go, oh, maybe I'll grab some ghee. So um, there is ghee in the Indian food sections. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so it, and then you could even even use coconut cream or coconut milk, the the, the yes. fat on top. Um, I'm all about. I love that stuff. I think it's good. I just have to always be careful with my gallbladder. So, yeah, exactly. With the extra fat, you have to be mm -hmm. careful for sure. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's what I was kind of diving into this morning a little bit. And what do you have planned for the weekend? <clears throat> I am going to finish cleaning the house. Now we're we're home this weekend, so it'll be a matter of making sure um it would be nice to think I could get some seeds in the ground outside for the long growing uh squash uh and for some of the lettuces just to try them out. Why not? So I do need mm -hmm. to go get some soil. Um I would like to get some wood chips. I do need to program out all my great content that I'm creating for my five day detox. I'm going to keep running that for May because nice. it, it, it needs respect, right? There's so many mm -hmm. uh, different things to talk about. What, why maca, why ashwagandha, why alfalfa, why cilantro, why parsley, yeah. right? Why all these great things. And then I realized I do need to go get herbs for my garden. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Cause I'm like, I don't have any, what was I looking for? Oh, when I don't have bay leaves, I usually need to write this stuff down as I'm going That's through, true, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have that. And then I was thinking I need more ginger. And then I was watching videos last night of how to grow your own ginger, which I thought mm -hmm. was fantastic. Um, and what a beautiful plant. And you can do that. I'm pretty sure, don't hold me to it. Pretty sure you can do the same thing with turmeric. It's a rhizome as well. Mm -hmm. So I may go grab some root and I may try and grow my own turmeric. Mm, that's interesting. I don't don't know. I know there's actually for the people that forage and do a lot of herbology and different things like that. I think you mm -hmm. can get actually wild ginger in this area and, I, and it's a bead basically, but I don't know if it's got that same. Is it the ginger or the ginseng you're thinking? No, I think there's wild ginger as well. Out Is the there? Bush. Yeah. 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 I love but, watching my Facebook page that I want, that I'm following with the Ontario foraging. So oh, the yeah. rape, uh, like the, the little, the wild leeks are starting to come up. Um, yeah. The morales, they're all hoping that all the morales come up. Um, well, we all hope our morales come up. <laughs> um, our, the morales start popping You're so up. so funny. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, start coming up through the bush. I know James is wanting to go forage for fiddleheads. Um, but I just never know where to exactly look and those types mm -hmm. of things. So, and the right <clears> ones. <throat> I know I, when I was and the right ones. walking around the my garden the other day and I was going down to the end because I've got like a ton of fern at the end of my property, but I don't know if these are the right ones to be pulling. Like, I know. Heads or not. So, I know. You know. I was hoping somebody would let me know, but I, I uh, you'll touch. just, you'll just feel funny. <laughs> What will it do? No worse than anything um, else I put in my body, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it would be, I, I have uh, my celery and my bok choy and stuff like that need to go. If it would warm up, I could put it outside, right? Um, so I don't know, maybe some gardening. I would like to finish painting. Um, we have a bit of a white trim to happen. So I think getting up at four or five in the morning will probably need to happen for stuff to get done. Right. Uh, James yeah. is in the James is in his uh, workshop all weekend. So <clears throat> I need to be diligent and I need to create some videos and. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's a long list, my friend. That's a long list for only two days. <laughs> or three, three days. Three days. Three, three days. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. And and I've and I'm so happy I've been able to start my smoothies again. I love smoothies. They're such a great um, although I have to be careful. I put um, hemp, chia, and flaxseed mm -hmm. into this. And there's a really rich butter flavor to it. So I'll have to make sure I not put that many. Because in my previous blenders, it would not purify it as much as the oh, neutral it does. Yeah. So, and this one has the arugula and kale, a little bit of cilantro. Um, I didn't have oranges, so I just put orange doTERRA drops in it. Um, I should have used my ginger that I was thinking of doing this, but um, I just used my ginger drops. And it's really quite tasty. Avocado. Yeah, wow. it's good. Yeah, jam packed. That's very rich. That's very rich. Yeah, there's a lot of good healthy fats in that one. You're gonna watch your gallbladder later. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. I've got actually a, a Nutribullet. Too. No, it's um. Yeah, I guess it's a Nutribullet. It's a bigger one though. It was in place of the Vitamix that I still have on my list, but you have the Blend Tech probably. Yeah, the bigger one that's got like three the or square four things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So your plans for the weekend? My plans, um, probably a, something along the same lines as you, because my husband's actually starting night shift tonight. He is going, um, so he's still sleeping right now. So he's uh, going to be gone. My kid is always working afternoon shift, so it's just me and pretty much, and so. I can actually stay up late, probably won't stay up late working, um, but, uh, you know, getting out, getting some fresh air, getting back on my bike this weekend, programming like you, um, I'm going to start looking at the garden a little bit more and trying to figure out what we're going to put in there. We're more mm -hmm. than people that don't go right from seed, we go from plants, so have yeah. to maneuver that a little bit this year, figuring, because we just can't walk into a Canadian Tire and do it, we have to plan ahead and order and all these different things so it makes it a little bit more difficult and make some room yeah. in my garden shed to um put these plants because they're not hardy enough to stay outside yet so. no not yet not yet i know that at azilda greenhouse you can call over mm -hmm. and just make your order and do the curbside pickup yeah. um and i think i'll i'll head or the lineups will probably be crazy but I'll, I'll try and head to food basics or the independent to go grab some a black earth or some nice topsoil and uh, a couple bags of manure to mix in by hand and in, in my raised garden mm -hmm. i wanted to top up where i transplanted the plants in the front my poppies to give them a little bit of nutrient boost and uh, and then i might go find some wood chips Good luck with that. Yeah. Actually, the greenhouses will definitely have it and everybody else. I know we have uh, raised beds as well. There's about one, two, three, five or six of them. And um, yeah, I'll probably just get the, the fork out and start digging just to loosen up the ground and get rid of the mm -hmm. weeds that are mm -hmm. flourishing already. And then, you know, bring in some soil as well. So that's kind of a nice thing. Nice thing. Nice thing. And you've still got your I know we talked a little bit about it last night. You still got your sauerkraut and your sprouts and all these different things. You've yeah, I didn't. Sorry, I, I didn't bring all my props with me right now. So, um, my alfalfa sprouts are about done. Uh, the mung beans I didn't do anything with because they didn't. Uh, they were. I think they were too old. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't sprout nicely. So I might add them to a rice dish later on, wow. or nice. I might just throw them out. What's a what's a quarter cup of what's a quarter cup of uh, Beans. Mung beans, nothing really. Um, and and uh, even the sauerkraut looks fantastic. I had lots of carrots in it. I was trying to use up some older carrots. Um, and I put the daikon radish. I put some radishes in there. So it has a bit of a bite to it, but definitely will be experimenting with flavor my next batch. Mm -hmm. And I may pop into it because I've got some Chinese, little Chinese peppers. Oh. Yes, you yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I need to add that and create some kimchi, but it's a matter of getting in there. And then when you're at Costco, they don't have little things like cabbage, or at least they didn't yet. So I need to go get another cabbage and purple cabbage and uh, all those little great handfuls of things rather than 
bag full of things, right? So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, you don't need too too much around because then yeah, just, uh, I mean, and and I think I'm I mean with the um, with the starter mix it just kind of gets things going. So it ferments better in four days rather than waiting a month. Mm -hmm. So I might, I might try uh, and do regular. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It's all, yeah. It's all up in the air. Anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit today about, I didn't know how to segue into it because I wasn't going in that direction, but mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, I have a, I have a hard time with willpower when, like, as we're talking about cravings all week in my um, Facebook group, and we've been discussing all the different ways that, or like, what is a craving, trying to figure out, bring awareness to that craving, how to deter the craving and stuff like that. But there's still that underlying like willpower to really just get um involved in in what's going on and, and then you know trying to be proactive against all the things that are obviously never going to change around us i mean there's always going to be junk food there's always going to be sugary you know all these processed foods um and it's just a matter of trying to figure out how it works and um, uh, you know how to deter it and everything else like that. I was reading that there's something called um, mirror neuro, um, mirror neurons. I think it's called mirror. Yeah, it's yeah. those just those neurons that when you yawn, the yeah. next person yawns. Yeah, right. It's or that, sometimes yeah. have you ever noticed when you're when you sort of you're like this listening intently and then the next person will go yeah it's those mimicking it's that mimicking aspect of things um how we just it's just that natural thing that happens with people mm -hmm. and yeah so i i you know in the it, it's a tough it's very tough willpower yeah. right and it's yeah Go especially ahead. when especially when we um you know are around a bunch of people that perhaps are not so vigilant about worrying about their health or they're not caring at that moment or whatever so if we go out to dinner or with a bunch of friends or we um they, people say it's influencing but I, I really believe that it's these mirror neurons that are just really affecting us on a different level that we don't even understand um you know all the beautiful wonderful fried foods or whatever that we get in restaurants um even just having stuff in our own households and then having other people like i said that, like my husband who will have a bag of chips after dinner without even thinking about it kind of mm -hmm. thing and you just that willpower to just say no is is very hard sometimes and it's almost like it's set up against us so it just makes it really really difficult and i know we've been talking about that um a lot on different levels in our group this week so yeah yeah um yeah so i mean different ways that we can really look at um uh, working around that willpower is just i mean simply not having that kind of food in our house i was thinking about it yesterday um one of, it's like a little trick i don't know if i've got it right here uh taking a little post-it note and then if you've got a bunch of junk food like from everybody else that likes it in the house put it in one cupboard and then you put a little red or, um, or a post-it note on that cupboard door that says either stop or just like a little stop sign or something like that, just to give you that, that, um, that indication that to really stop and think before you're going to get into that cupboard or get into that junk food or get into that food that probably is not what you want. So you don't end up going through that roller coaster of guilt and shame and negative thinking and all these other things that come hand in hand with, emotional eating or whatever so i thought that was a kind of a cool little tip to um, mm -hmm. i mean we can't tell everybody else in our house no you can't have this no you can't have that but at the same time it you don't want it to work against you you know you don't want it to be your downfall just because everybody else doesn't care you know <laughs> you have to care yeah. about yourself and really work with that and sometimes it's hard it is hard yeah. it is hard yeah, even, uh, you know, the reminding, leaving sticky notes on the mirror or writing in a, a dry, 
went a dry erase marker of the things that you're trying to remind yourself to give you mm -hmm. that added motivation or encouragement um, especially when you have a lot of self-doubt um, you want to have that constant reminder of how what your worth is what your value what your uh, what your goal is for the day and you've got this and and or a memory verse for myself it might be a memory verse um, something that encourages me from the bible that I would leave written Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's it's those types of really great things. I find that um, I'll look in the Bible for things that will uh, give me encouragement or help me with willpower. Right. Because for, you know, it's a lot of the times it's beyond our capability and it's beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to we have to sort of. Um, well, people really sometimes have to reach for something higher than ourselves in finding that strength, that inner strength and building that strength to overcome challenges, overcome um, these these blocks to our health. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very encouraging, it's very encouraging to uh, to hold on to these, put them on the fridge that it, it is perhaps we are weak right? Like there's a bag of chips or James is eating chips in bed. I'm weak, right? I can't, you know, do I take a couple? And I can't or, just eat just one. <laughs> can't just eat one because they're salty, they're crispy, they're fresh because yeah. I only buy the best for him. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, and again, the willpower thing, Wendy, becomes uh, making sure that you're set up for success. Yes. Right? So your vegetables are cut. Mm -hmm. You have hummus you have tzatziki, right? Mm -hmm. And you have those things that meet uh, all the sort of craving standards, right? That chocolate, so that Crunchy. you have, to, yeah. yeah, you have those cacao nibs. You can pop a couple cacao nibs or cacao, however you want to say that. Pop those in your mouth. You get that chocolate, you get that crunch, you get that bit of tartness, or mm -hmm. it's kind of like tart. Um, you can have some salty snacks, you know, uh, some dehydrated things, uh, or you can roast chickpeas, and especially when you're yes. talking about your whole cravings things, it's making sure you're set up for success. Mm -hmm. So using rainy days like yesterday would have been a great day to go, okay, what can I do? And I love your idea of making sure that the things are set aside for you. You have your own cupboard. Yes. Yeah. And, and their cupboards. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of have set that up with the kids that Jaden has her own gluten-free shelf and oh, James, yeah. I keep up high out of my reach. I have to get a stool and <laughs> to work hard at it. <laughs> yeah. To work hard at it. If I want it, I really got to work for it. Yeah. But, um, you know, as I, as I, as I think, and, you know, he's trying to be health conscious as well. So I need to be more uh, proactive in setting up things because he it's a, he's a habit of creature. I mean, he's yeah. a creature of habits right? <laughs> because his parents were snackers. Yes. He's a snacker. It's that comfort food. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 No. And, and the same thing too. I mean, my husband is actually, he likes his, his junk food, obviously. I mean, everybody does, but he's, he's so once he's made up his mind about something, that's it. Like, that's okay. Like he, he decided, oh, I don't need any more chips. I've gained five pounds or whatever. I'm getting a little bit of a tummy, he says. And then he never wants to buy chips again, like ever. <laughs> I was thinking, well, that's good for me. Yeah. But then I never have the, anything to snack on. But then I find that he, he says, I don't want any chips. It's making me, you know, I've got this belly now. That's it. That's all. But then he'll go and get a box of cereal and sit in front of what TV with a box of cereal and just kind of eat it like chips or something along that line. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> At least you're not eating chips, but you know, there's always something. Um, yeah, he does the same thing. I'll make a nice, I'll cut up all the veggies. I'll put them in one of those old rubber Tupperware big yeah. things, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the things we go, why am I holding on to this? And then yeah. you remember why, but, uh, and he'll sit and he'll eat the whole darn thing. And I'll be like, that was supposed to be for the week. Like what the <laughs> heck? Well, I mean, vegetables <laughs> is not a bad thing by any means. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the standing joke in our house is the fact that he'll have his, his big meal and that's fine and everything else. 
but if there's more food on the table, like if you were to serve uh, all your food on the table and then just eat from the table kind of thing, as opposed to bringing the plate to the table, he would sit there and pick everything. And I, and I say like, aren't you, you said you're done, you're full. You just had a full plate or even two plates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm done eating. And he just takes more and more and more. He has the potential to be really a big person, but his metabolism is one of those, I think, like James. Mm-hmm. Just skinny person metabolism kind of thing where they're just uh, go, go, go. But I mean, James works physically hard. Like He does work really hard, too, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. they work it off. And men have a different way of, metabolizing as well too so they can I know my husband had to stop drinking beer because um, he's on medications for his health so that alone has you know he has he doesn't have a belly anymore he doesn't have the extra weight at all just from stopping and drinking beer so uh, yes simple for women so (laughs) that's funny that you that you said that like I'm trying, you know, if we head back to the cottage, there's always a lot of alcohol with neighbors or, or or just around the cottage, or you're always like, you become in that habit of, oh, let's have a Caesar with breakfast, or I've worked really hard. I'm pretty thirsty. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Or there's, or there's a lot of stress. So it's just like, oh, you're right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some. But uh, so this time I picked up a case, and they cut, and they have 24 cases, like the case at Costco of the bubbly. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. So I've picked up a case to leave the cottage. So what that I still have that sound, you know, that bubbly coldness, um, just to have better success with drinking. Mm-hmm. And, and start doing that because uh, weight loss for me is something that I need to take care of. So if I'm this now in 10 years, it's not going to help, right? Yeah. Knee pain, hip pain, or yeah, those right. types of things are and the inflammation are things that I'm trying to prevent. Mm-hmm. Um, and obesity uh, that I'm just genetically dispositioned to um, that mm-hmm you I need to be careful of so it's having those success systems there um and having the right tools like if it's just simply using bubbly that's fantastic yeah right yeah I actually I've had a hard time getting used to soda water I was never really a big person on this but because I'm not a big bubbly fan I can't yep I don't like um, carbonation so, so much, but I've been buying it because it tastes better than some of the other versions that have been out there anyways. And I use it actually to water down drinks. So if I want a glass of wine, I'll put like half and half. I know probably all the wine people are going, oh my God. No, it's good. It's good. It's like a spritzer almost kind of situation. Yep. And, um, and even, yeah, even just for something other than water, it's really uh, a nice alternative um, and you're still getting that extra water in to your system too. And I like to put it in a fancy glass. And for the people that were watching perhaps last night, um, I have like a wine glass and I just use juice and the bubbly in it. And it just makes you feel like you're drinking mm-hmm. a drink or having something special or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. Tricking the brain there. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm, so I, 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 read uh you sent me an article about willpower and then i was started to read also on psychology today um yeah her article from uh well it's from 2013 but it's that willpower and that muscle or and it reminds you of that aspect of it use it or lose it don't overdo it right Mm -hmm. so like muscles we know uh get stronger when exercised Mm -hmm. right but muscles when they're overworked become weaker and there's less of a chance of recovery and injury same thing with your willpower you want to just be consistent easy steps easy steps um and and you know use it create that momentum that's why that's sort of 21 days to uh, create a habit Mm -hmm kind of philosophy comes from where you don't want to go all gangbusters that's why even with the five-day detox it's i'm going to use it all month because it's that creating the habit incorporating the healthy food slowly Mm -hmm. and for some people it's really difficult to get rid of the sugar it's really difficult to uh, eat more greens right because they're not used to it yeah it's creating that momentum of of creating that 
muscle memory, sorry, muscle memory. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. And she has uh, some really great tips here, how to strengthen your willpower. So she has, uh, don't keep yourself in a constant state of willpower depletion, right? So um, you don't keep taking things away. Mm -hmm. All yeah, I mean, you're, you're basically just setting yourself up for failure if you just try to jump in two feet, uh, you know, cold turkey kind of situation. And it, mm -hmm. and I mean, I talk about this in my in my group all the time is that those baby steps and it's 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 not something either too that I really I don't promote um, what do you call it uh, restriction or anything along that lines either because restriction again will set us up for failure because everybody around us is not restricting or you know they're, they're just carrying on with their lives like normal and you're trying to do something healthy for yourself it's hard when you sit there and watch people eat a plate of pasta uh, and, and not have pasta or it's hard to sit there and watch somebody have a bag of chips when you know you can't have chips so it's it's not just a matter of even just willpower but it's a matter of not restricting yourself as well but at the same time you know making conscious choices and then not feeling bad about it too because I have a feeling that it's a lot of the internal work too it's the um the psychology behind the eating and you 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 know a yep. lot about that and not feeling guilty you know taking the moment just to stop and breathe make a conscious decision and then go from there and not feel bad about it you know no shame no guilt no judgment yep and just you know, go on with your life and don't have, if it's a bag of chips or even just a couple of chips, not worrying about it so much and just get on with the next stage in your life. <laughs> because, you know, we can't waste our energy and our time feeling crappy all the time because we had the bag of chips or a few chips or whatever, right. you know, so it makes it, yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, I think too, it has a lot to do with who you hang around and, um, you know, the people that you have in your life as well, too. Um, I know, you know, being the type of people we are with the holistic end of things and the food and everything else, I know the way I've lived my life, it wears off on, you know, the people around me, my husband, my, my parents, my kids, all these different people. And then of course, um, you know, having friends that are like-minded as well is always a kind of a nice way of doing things too, because mm -hmm. apparently they say that you are the average of the five people that you hang around most. So you got to think about the five people that you hang around most in your life or have in your life. And then you are pretty much like the average of that person sort of thing. So it's a kind of a cool little thing. And it's a good or bad thing. Well, it depends on the five people, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I mean, there's other tips and, and tricks that you can um, definitely incorporate when trying to do the willpower as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even just visual cues, like we were talking about with the little post-it notes, or even just having, doing a big visualization um, exercise for yourself. And, you know, it's basically, it's all it is, is daydreaming. And then, you know, making yep. notes or taking pictures. Nobody has magazines anymore, but... Remember when we used to take pictures out of magazines and put them on a board and yeah, your vision board. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, listening and reading and, you know, keeping up all the time. And then of course, you really wanting to get um, some extra help. Then you go towards a professional to really, you know, help to keep you accountable for a lot of things. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I hang out with you because you keep me accountable. I keep you accountable. And that's that end of the, <laughs> the whole story when it comes to stuff like that, too. So, yeah, know. I have I have uh, those accountability partners with my prayer teams as well, yes. where they'll 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 question maybe something I put on Facebook or they'll they'll mm -hmm. question something because it's not of um, of character perhaps and that's something to really be aware of as well is what you what what you're doing how does that build your character mm -hmm. yeah right yeah so that's that's pretty cool that's lots of things to think about right yeah. especially when it's trying yeah. to come to self self-discipline um and and uh creating better willpower and creating better habits for change uh, especially when it comes to improving your health and creating that sort of prevention momentum mm -hmm. and it's I mean, 
sorry. No, no, go. No, I was just saying, I was just going to say that it, essentially it, it comes down to really taking care of yourself first. And I know it, some people think, oh, well, that's really selfish. And for people that feel that it's kind of a negative thing, it's not um, because we really have to take and consider ourselves first and because nobody else is going to care for us, you know, and it's, yep. um, if we don't care for ourselves and really keep our own health good uh, you know we're not going to be able to do you, what are you looking at <laughs> i'm looking at my 10 by 10 i'm just trying to figure out how i can move this and show you so, go ahead um yeah just to keeping ourselves healthy and the self-care and everything else that that's so very important um i just wanted to mention next week in my private facebook group we are diving into some really fun self-care like this last week we we looked at the cravings, cravings. and coping with them and everything else with our snacks and trying to find some alternatives for that next week we're going to just dive into a little bit more vanity kind of self-care and looking at our um skin care so amazing amazing skin care one thing that's really really important to me because i am quite sensitive to the sun and i know this weekend i'm thinking um <laughs> i'm gonna have to get my hats out because you know the sun is is quite harsh on my skin. I know it's harsh on everybody's skin, but at the same time, I got to look after myself first, you know? So yes. Putting and having some fun with regards to that next week, all in my, my, my private Facebook group is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So, yes. I, I can very easily. And, and you know, it's, it's that, uh, Oh my goodness. When I was a teen, I'm just, you know, it's that whole waiting for things to happen mm -hmm. and uh, I have good genes. So that's probably why, but doing the, the tanning beds, well, okay. Well, being up till four, getting up workings, right. Then going for tanning beds and then going out for lunch and then going and tanning again in the sun, sun, mm -hmm. oh, the evil things we would do to our bodies. Right. Well, yeah, I remember, uh, because I was always so pale all the time, I mm -hmm. remember putting um, baby oil on my skin and hanging out on the roof of the garage. <laughs> trying to get a little bit of yeah. Yeah, sun and not not good. No. Yeah, my and daughter's about, that way. So Yeah, about a year and a half ago. No, about a year ago, I guess, I did some chemo work on my um, forehead for sun damage. And as I was talking to the doctor, she was... And I said, well, you know, it was probably because, you know, I fell asleep in the sun when I was a kid and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, no, this is just recent stuff too. It's like the stuff that happened back then, you know, was back then. And, mm -hmm. and the stuff that's, that's coming up now is only within the last five or six years or whatever. And I was pretty much, you know, put back by that because I always have some sort of sunscreen in my moisturizer, try to wear hats, try to do everything else. But I mean, even still, I mean, I've still got stuff that I'm going to have to work on in my always getting my chest burned. And, you know, these things that you just don't think about just all the time. So yeah, lots and lots of stuff to worry about, but got to keep smiling. <laughs> yeah, have to keep going. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Well, that's incredible. I think I, I uh, we should add some um, great articles about willpower. Mm -hmm. um, we'll tag those below in our notes. Yep. Sorry. Um, tag those below in our notes. Um, make sure that you do tag yourself for that. Uh, um, your upcoming self-care beauty regime yes. uh, for next week. And uh, and yeah, we're just going to keep myself. We're just going to keep rolling into some great information about hormones and about detox. And mm -hmm. we're going to build up. We're going to use the rest of May to sort of, uh, you know, answer all those questions of why we need to take care of our hormones and why is it important to boost that detoxification capability um especially because you you are experiencing hot flashing and you're mm -hmm. some people are exhausted and some people are just you know not feeling the greatest as these you know they feel these mood cycles come along i know a lot of people just lately have been experiencing um of course they're all menzying the same time but it's that heaviness it's that lower back pain it's the swelling it's the salt cravings um, it's all of those different things. And, and it's not so much even menopause or perimenopause. It's even just having healthy periods, period. 
right? Yeah. The acne and why is that beneficial? And, mm-hmm. um, and, and some women, you know, there, there's lots of things to talk about um, when it comes just to education about hormones and educations about period health and, and those types of uh, things. So I look forward to that. And I think um, I, I meant to write this up in a little post was that, that the element of having, doing your 10 before 10, Mm. which is also about creating that um, willpower so that you have success or the bit of that self-discipline, self-discipline, willpower type of idea. Um, In creating that 10 before 10 um, idea is to create that great momentum so that you have that little checklist of things that you can accomplish before your workday begins or before you you head off to work or these things that you know that are necessary during Mm -hmm. these times so yeah and and it is a matter of incorporating that 21 day kind of situation where it becomes a habit where you just think about it you get up you get your coffee with me the habit is I get up get my coffee put the dogs out and then I start working well I have to start incorporating a few more things in there so I can have a better regime going on for myself yeah. anyways. Um, and yeah, it's just a matter of something you're doing consistently over and over again to incorporate that it's going to be good for you, not bad habits, but good habits, you know, or try exactly. to switch one bad habit out for one good habit. This is one of the things, you know, mm-hmm. again, not jumping in all of a sudden, I've got to do this, 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 and this, and this, you know, when it, that sometimes that's kind of hard because you've got so many on that list that may be just, switching out one thing for one thing at a time you know one bad one for one good one or one that doesn't serve you for one that might be more helpful you know Mm -hmm. yeah definitely okay so I guess we'll cut it off there and yeah um we'll see everybody on Monday morning Monday. Have a great weekend, Wendy. Have a great weekend. Connect Thank with you. us if anybody's interested in, um, you know, following. We'll put all the links there. Um, newsletters, programs, all these different things are all in the comments there. So please, 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 you know, help yourself. Most of it, I think, is all free. So it's all just there for you, the taking. So talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Wendy. Have a great day. Bye. Have a good day, everyone.